So we have a question here about rational functions. We want to find out the vertical asymptote and the slant asymptote. So we'll start with the vertical asymptote. Those are pretty easy to find. They're always going to be in the denominator. You set it equal to zero. So just remember you're looking at x intercepts in the numerator and vertical asymptotes in the denominator. So we're intentionally dividing by zero and then you solve for x and do that add three, divide by two, that's your vertical asymptote. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's look at slant asymptotes. So what in the world are slant asymptotes? They describe end behavior. So slant asymptote is end behavior. It's one type of end behavior. So typically I draw it as a cloud. Now, <clears throat> the slant asymptote is a very specific type of end behavior. It's when this is a line. Now a horizontal, if this word is horizontal, that's describing a line with a zero slope. Slant asymptote means it's a line and the slope is not zero. So it's either gonna be a positive slope looking like this or it's gonna be a negative slope looking like that. It's our job to figure out which one of these it is. So let's go ahead and do what we always do for end behavior. We're gonna keep the highest order terms. So we're gonna eliminate lower, if I could spell, lower order terms. And you're gonna get a line whenever the power in the numerator, the square is one higher than the power in the denominator, which for us is a first power. So let's go ahead and write out our function. So our function is eight x squared minus 10x minus one divided by two x minus three. The reason that I do not write f of x is because what I'm about to do to this function is in no way algebra. So this is not going to equal f of x because I'm just gonna start throwing away stuff. So end behavior, you wanna think about what happens when x is big, like a million, a billion, a trillion. So if you have a million, you multiply by two, that gets twice as big and then subtract three, nobody cares that you subtracted three. So just in the denominator, this minus three doesn't matter anymore. We're gonna throw it away. We're gonna do the same thing in the numerator. This minus one does not matter, but we're not gonna quite throw away that negative 10 X because you're about to see what's gonna happen. It has the same power as the denominator x has. So we're going to keep it and this is equal to 8x squared minus 10x divided by 2x. So let's go ahead and clean this up with some algebra. I can factor in the numerator, I can factor out a 2x and there'll be x minus 5. This cancels out really nicely. 2x cancels 2x, so we get x minus 5. I probably shouldn't call this y up here. I'll just go question mark. All right. Well, if I really cross those out, this is y. But again, we're not doing algebra. We're thinking about end behavior here. So we're throwing out the low power terms. All right, so what did keeping the, x, uh, the 10x actually do? up in the numerator. So that negative 10x actually turned into our uh, y-intercept of our line. So if I was gonna graph this function and I wanna be super accurate about the end behavior, I would go down five. So we'll say that's negative five. Our slope's gonna be one. So our end behavior is gonna be the line with slope one. Now it's gonna drive me crazy because I didn't put that mark right on the right where it should be, but typically we draw a dotted or dashed line for end behavior. So that would be the end behavior of this function.
Uh, that minus five is not the most important part of the end behavior. So sometimes I will leave it off. But in this case, when they're asking specifically for a slant asymptote, they want you to include that minus five. And so if you answer as an entire equation, it would be right here.